Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Permaslug episode. My name is Jonathan and today what I'm going to show you is how to set up a client editable menu for a restaurant using only two plugins. That is Oxygen to design your website and then Advanced Custom Fields Pro. And this is going to allow you to set up a menu in the back end of WordPress on a particular page. In this case, we're just calling it our menu page. And then you're going to set up advanced custom fields repeater elements. Um, and then you'll be able to configure as many menus as, you, as you'd like. In this case, we'll just do like a breakfast menu, as you can see here on the screen. But what you can also do is have more. So you could have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You could have, you know, late night tapas, whatever you want. Basically, the idea here is that we're going to build a menu so that the client can come into the back end of WordPress. They can edit the menu without having to contact you and they'll never have to actually see any code. And they'll also never have to know that oxygen is what is rendering the site. So basically what I'm going to do is just show you the back end of this example site here. I only have these two plugins. It's advanced custom fields pro, which is so cheap that if you haven't already bought it, just go ahead and do it. You will, you'll be amazed at all the stuff that it can do, especially in relation to oxygen. And in this particular case, we're just using Oxygen 3.0. So if you're not familiar with what Oxygen is, I have a couple other videos on my channel talking about Oxygen and the things that it can do. Um, and the 3.0 version just brought in some incredible integrations with uh, WooCommerce that we'll get into in another video, as well as Advanced Custom Fields Pro. Um, so on the back end of our menu page, this is what it looks like to your client. So you can tell it looks really simple. I have I haven't hidden the Oxygen, um, you know. Uh, editor here from view for, you know, like the editor class of, of user. Um, but you can do that so that then they can only see the, you know, the actual menu and what you want them to see. And that's all built in using oxygen as well. So let's go ahead and just close out of this stuff here. I'm going to take you over to this other WordPress install that I have. And at this time, there is absolutely nothing on the site, as you can see. So what we're going to do first is start off by creating an oxygen template. And we're just going to call this one all pages. And this is just to show you how easy it is to set up a template uh, inside of Oxygen to start building your site. So even if you have a site in you know Divi or Elementor or whatever, it, it really doesn't take that long once you get the, the hang of Oxygen to start designing your site. So uh, in this particular case, all we really need to do is set this template to apply on our pages, because on this site, we're just going to have pages. Uh, and that's about it for this time. So just go ahead and click on publish and then click the button that says edit with oxygen. So now what we're going to do is basically just add in from the library down here. We're going to go to design sets, click on winery, and then we'll go to sections. Uh, let's just put in the same header. Actually, let's do this white header, change it up a little bit, make it look nice. And uh, of course, our restaurant probably isn't a winery, but you know, it's close enough that it kind of makes sense. I'm going to go back to add go to footers this time and then let's just do like this one. And then um, what I want to do now is go back to add, go all the way back to kind of my main screen here, click on basics and then click the inner content element. If you're not familiar with the inner content, this is basically just the element that's going to render what's on either the, um, the pages, uh, you know, whatever is in Gutenberg on that particular page or post or in the WordPress content editor, if you're still using the classic editor. Um, but it's basically going to be the middle section of, you know, every page or post on our site. So let's go ahead and take that into the middle between our header and our footer here. And then a little trick I like to do, which you've probably seen before, if you watch my videos is click on size and spacing when I have the inner content element selected, choose min height, and then set that min height to something like 85 VH. So that way your footer is not floating in, in the top of the screen if the page content is not very long. So click on save and there we have it. Your header and footer are ready to go and your, your uh, inner content element is gonna render the content of our pages. So let's go ahead and click on back to WordPress admin. The next thing we're gonna do is actually go add in our menu page. So let's just go add a new page. We'll call this one menu and then, oh, Gutenberg, not used to that yet. Uh, <laughs> so we'll just call this page menu, click on publish, and then we really don't need to worry about anything else, uh, you know, as far as the, this particular page at the moment. So now what we can do is go to custom fields, click on field groups. And if, if, if you've never done this before, that's okay. I'm going to walk through this slow enough that you should be able to follow along perfectly. Click on add new field group here and just call this something super generic like menu. That's totally fine. Uh, you don't need to worry about oxygen. So just go ahead and minimize that. And then don't worry about adding a field just yet. What we're going to do is change post type is equal to page. And then the post 
we're gonna change to page is equal to menu. So you can set this up however you want. I just don't want this field group to appear anywhere else except the menu page. Um, a couple of things that I like to do down here is just change the position of where these custom fields show up to high right after the title above the oxygen editor. So it's at the top of the page, you can't miss it. And that's pretty much all you need to do. So just, I like to go ahead and click on publish. And now we can actually add in our fields here. So what you're gonna see is an overwhelming assortment of options and questions here. Um, this field label, just call, you know, um, actually before you set your field label, change this field type to repeater all the way down here at the bottom. And you're not gonna see this unless you have Advanced Custom Fields Pro installed. Um, the, uh, the field label you can just change to something like, in our case earlier, we had breakfast menu. And then you could change, you could have, you know, just one menu for the whole site. Uh, but what I would like to do if it were me with a real restaurant is break these up into like breakfast menu, lunch, dinner, etc. Um, and then you don't have to set this to required. That's up to you. But here's where the repeater element kind of comes into its own. So the subfields is where we're going to actually add in what we showed earlier, which was the item price description and the name. So you can set these up in whatever order you want. It really doesn't matter because we're going to configure it in oxygen, how we want it to look. So the order doesn't make any difference at all here. So click on add field field label is going to be, let's just say like item name. And then the, um, the field label and the field name can, can match. Just make sure they're not too generic. You want them to be unique so you don't cause yourself problems. Field type, you could play around with this, but everything that you saw me do earlier, they were all set up as text elements. Um, whether or not you want it to require it is up to you. Um, it might make sense, but I mean, I really don't think that it's that big of a deal. The next field we're gonna add is, let's say the item price. And then same thing, just leave it as, as a field type of text. And one more, we did the item description. And then from here, you could add, if you wanted to, like an image or you know other details, maybe if you have like a, like a star rating or something special that you need to add, maybe like gluten-free considerations or you know any kind of other extra data, you could add a fourth element here. We're not gonna worry about that at the moment, so we just have our three. Now down here, you can say, you know, a minimum number of rows as in like, you know, how many menu items do you have to have? You can choose what is collapsed uh, on the back end. So don't really worry about any of this kind of stuff. Um, but the button label here might be something you want to mess with. So instead of it saying add row, you could just say add menu item. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Go ahead and scroll back up to the top and just click on update. And there's our field group created. In this particular case, what you might want to do is just go ahead and click on duplicate. And then you could call this one like, you know, lunch menu instead of breakfast. And then just make sure to change the uh, field name here, lunch menu. Uh, I'll just leave it lunch menu copy. And that'll be totally fine. So click on update. And now when we go back to our menu page, what you'll see is the field group that we just set up is now visible right here. So the breakfast menu, of course, there's nothing on it, but if you click add menu item, then this is where you can actually start adding in the menu item. So earlier I just had French toast. That's my <laughs> favorite breakfast food. Uh, item price, I think I said like $9. And then choose your topping of fresh fruit or maple syrup, Sir, syrup, <laughs> there we go. Um, and you can just add in a couple things here. So eggs, Benedict was another one I chose. Let's say that one is $12. Salmon and capers is the description on that. Uh, another one might be eggs, egg skillet, something like that. I don't know, maybe 10 bucks. And this comes with your choice of bacon or ham. For lunch, we can put in a BLT. That's gonna be $8.49. And then the, our description is gonna be comes with fries or salad. And then we can have, what else do we want for lunch? What sounds good right now? Um, maybe like a chicken salad. And that will be $12 because those are always way overpriced. And then uh, grilled chicken salad with your choice of dressing. Dressing, there we go. And then what's our third item? So we have three in breakfast and three in lunch. Let's say something like a uh, cheese burger. That'll be 10 bucks. And comes with uh, steak fries. There we go. Perfect. So again, 
Um, you know, you can see how easy it is for a client to come in here and edit this menu themselves. You wouldn't actually have to, you know, do it for them. They, they are totally capable of getting in here and adding as many items as they want. Um, you could set this up for them so that then they can come in and kind of see the example, but I really don't think there would be any confusion here. Um, if you own and run a restaurant, then you can figure this out, I think. So go ahead and click on update. And then now what we're going to do is actually go down here and edit with oxygen. And this is where we're going to set up the repeater element in the, the oxygen editor, which you only have to do once. And then anything your client adds to that menu that we just created is going to automatically show up on the front end. So let's add in a section. We're going to start off with a heading and we're just going to call this heading breakfast menu. Let's add some margin underneath this heading here. And then um, we're going to add in our repeater element, which is under helpers. So this is where it starts to get fun. So when the, um, in the query option, click on use ACF repeater. This one, because we're working with our breakfast menu, we're going to click on breakfast and then you can click on apply. It's not going to do anything at the moment. That's fine. Um, but what we can do here is in this div, this is going to be the container of one menu item. So this whole thing, what you can do is start to build inside of that. So what I'm going to do here is click on a uh, heading. I'm going to add that in. And it's going to re-render every time, uh, which I think there's a way to change, but it's not that big of a deal. You only have to do this once, so it's not like it's hard. Uh, what you can do is double click this and then choose this insert data. This is the dynamic data button. Click insert data, choose repeater field, and then the field we're going to go with item name, insert. And then as you can see, it brings in all of our breakfast items that we just created, which is super awesome. I'm going to go ahead and add in a text element here and then do the same thing. Double click on this, insert data, repeater, and then we're gonna add in our item description. And there you go. So there's the descriptions that we just put. One more element I'm gonna add in is a heading here. And then this heading is gonna actually be our price. So let's double click, insert data, repeater, and then item price. And now you can see the prices that we set up look perfect. So this doesn't look exactly like you would want it, I wouldn't think, because you probably want how it was set up before with the, the uh, title and the description to the left and then the price out to the right. And that's really easy to fix. So what I'm going to do is change this div that I have selected here to stack child elements horizontally. And that looks roughly right. But then, you know, if you went middle and kind of space between, then things don't look quite right. I mean, that looks fine. But if you have a longer description, it's going to start skewing the uh, structure. So what I'm going to do instead is actually open my structure panel. Inside this div, I'm going to take this heading and choose this little option here, say wrap with div. And then I'm going to take this text and put it inside of that div so that then the heading and the text are left aligned in the same div here. And then this heading is off on its own. So that is how I had it set up before. As you can see, it's super simple. Um, one thing that might make sense is to set the width of this div to maybe something like 50% so that the text will wrap if it uh, ends up reaching the end of this div here. Um, and then, you know, there's plenty of space left out here for the price. What you can do from here is start actually styling this div and it's going to apply to all the other ones for you. So as an example, you might want to add, let's say maybe some padding, something like that. And then on the bottom, let's set maybe a, a bottom border of something like, you know, like a grayish color. And there you go. So now you can see that the structure of your menu is coming along really nicely. Um, if this were me, now what I would do is I'd actually go ahead and duplicate this whole section. So I'd come down here and change this to lunch menu. And then from here, all I have to do is actually click on this repeater and then change the query from breakfast to lunch. And then I can click on apply. And then everything that we set up for lunch is there. And you might be wondering, well, why is there two BLTs? Don't worry about that because it's not going to show up on the front end, just like this duplicate French toast. So click on save and then let's view this on the front end. And there you have it. So there's our lunch menu set up with our repeater element. And then there's our breakfast menu. So just for the sake of example, you might be wondering, well, what happens if I add a new item now? Do I have to come back into the oxygen visual editor? The answer is no. So let's click on edit page. Right now you can see we have three breakfast menu items. We have three lunch menu items. And let's add one more to breakfast. Let's just add in like, you know, side of grits or something for $5 cheese included. Then let's click on update. Once that's published, then we're going to move back to the page itself. So now we'll go back to our page. Let's go ahead and refresh. 
and then there's that new item that we added. So our side of grits was added automatically. So as you can see, that would make it extremely easy if you have a restaurant client to set them up a menu. This wouldn't require a plugin, only require you to design the page one time using the repeater element. And as you can see, it's really flexible. So there's a ton of options that you can do. Um, and I think this would be fantastic in a lot of use cases. I'm gonna try to brainstorm a bit more and see what are some other examples of uh, sites that would benefit from this. Maybe uh, you know projects of your own or, or possibly other client work, but I love the idea of setting something like this up and then allowing the client to come in there. And uh, what you can do, I mentioned earlier that you can actually hide the oxygen editor option from different uh, user levels. So if you go to oxygen and then click on settings, what you can do is click on role manager here and then you can say um, the, uh, you know, who has access to Oxygen. So by default, of course, administrators do. Editors do or do not. I think everything by default is no access, which is great. So as long as you set the person's user type to the appropriate level, whatever is applicable for them, and maybe just set the expectation, like if you need to change the structure of a page, that's something I do, and you know, it's either included or we bill for it or, or you know, however you want to do it. But long story short, you can hide the Oxygen editor from people. So when they come into the back end of a page, all they see is this you know top kind of Gutenberg item. And even if they put anything in here, it's not gonna make any difference because we've already rendered the page using Oxygen. We've built and rendered the page using Oxygen. So as you can see, it's really simple to set up a uh, menu here. What are we at, like 15 or 20 minutes? And we set up a, a site and added this, this repeater element extremely flexible and I think will be super useful. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely let me know. If you have any questions or you know other video topics that you'd like to see, uh, please do share them with me. You can either you know comment here on YouTube or send me an email and I will be more than happy to add it to my list of videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.